Well, greetings. This is Trev from OnlinePCLearning.com. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at advanced filters. I'm going to show you how to do some extra things with advanced filters. I get a lot of queries about how to deal with advanced filters where the criteria has blank fields. How do you cope with that? And also, we're going to have a look at how to run a user form with an advanced filter, where we'll be able to filter between a start date, a finish date, and or a company. Now, we're going to be able to do this by just typing in a part of the company name, or all of it, and we'll get all the information that we need. We'll also be able, we can have part of the criteria filled or all of it, it doesn't really matter. So in other words, the advanced filter that we're looking at will be totally versatile. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to do this at a worksheet level, and then in the tutorial after that, we'll show you how to do it here in a user form, and everything will be variable. For these fields here, for our date field, start and end date, and also for our company description, we're going to be able to type in part information. So we can put in that one date and not two dates. We'll be able to put in uh, into here uh, just the start of the name of the company or even just the start of the description. And then we'll be able to leave these fields blank or add to them if we want. Now on our worksheet level, here we, are, here we have the filtered data that we just looked at. I'll show you how to clear the information from your sheet and how you can do exactly what I showed. Put in two dates to start with, uh, to filter by just part of the name, it's going to autofill their company, but we'll go back a bit and just put COMP, and uh, then we're going to filter our data, and there it is. Now I'm going to take the time to go through this very, very slowly with you. The trick is in how you set up your criteria block over here. This is our criteria for the advanced filter, and it is linked to the information over here by formulas, and it's these formulas that we're going to have a look at. All right, well, let's get started. The first thing to do, if you're interested in this, is to download the template. Why would we download the template? Because it's going to have the data in it here. It's going to have all of the headings. It's going to have all of the headings so that you can easily do this tutorial. It will even have the lists. Now, I know that you're going to want to modify this to suit your own needs, but please, please, why not do it with the template first? You get far little or far less problems and you'll be able to then see how it works. And then when you're confident with knowing how it all works, then modify it to suit your needs or add it to your existing application, but not before. So here is the template you can download from the website. It's going to have the filtered data here. This is the data we're going to filter with our auto filter. I'm sorry, with our advanced filter, not an auto filter. The advanced filter is far more effective with multiple criteria. Here's the data we're going to be filtering. And here's the lists, lists that we're going to need in order to populate some of the criteria. All right, well, let's get going. The first thing we need to do is to create three dynamic named ranges for these three lists. So let's create those three dynamic named ranges. Click into Tax Category, go to Formulas, Name Manager. I'll pull this up here so we can see. We're going to go New to create a new name. This is going to be called Category. So we get rid of the tax at the beginning of it. And here is the formula we need to put in. If you're not sure about dynamic named ranges, there are several tutorials on the website that discuss it. It's offset, open bracket, then click on your first cell for your dynamic named range. Three commas because we don't want to offset any rows or columns. Then we're going to use counter, which is a function that will count the number of uh, pieces of data that we have. If we were counting numbers, we'd use count. So because it's text, we're using counter, open bracket, then scroll down to here, scroll over that information. I just would go to 10, as you see it there, 10, and then we're going to add to that another zero. So we can have 100 pieces of information, close bracket, close bracket again, and OK. Now, we want to check that dynamic named range. Please don't move on until you check it. Let's click into here and see if it works. There it is. Now, if we were to add another piece in here or take a piece out, it would automatically select that. Now, I'm going to go and put the next two dynamic named ranges in, and then we can move on. The next two ranges will be one for taxpayers and location. And we're going to use taxpayers as one word in our dynamic named ranges. OK, so now we have our three dynamic named ranges. One for category, picking up the information there. Our next one for location which is picking up our location here as to where we're storing our data. 
And our third is for taxpayers. Notice I've checked that they are all working before we proceed. Now that we have that, we can close that down, move over to our filtered data, and we're going to put some data validation in tax category, tax file number, and also location. So click into tax category, go to data, data validation, click into data validation, and choose list, and click into the source. Hit the F3 key and those three named ranges will come up. Well, what do we want? We want category here, click OK. Now next one, we'll go to data, data validation, list again, click into the source box F3, and this time we want taxpayers. A third location is location, data, data validation again. I think you're getting the idea of what we're doing here. List, click in F3, and this time we want location. OK and OK. So now, if we click on any of those, our lists can be put into those cells. Right? All of that is working for us, giving us the, the category, the tax number or the tax file number, and also the location. I'll delete that information because we don't need it just at the moment. Now, I just want to remind you before we move on that with an advanced filter, and we're going to be recording an advanced filter in a moment, the headings must be exactly the same. The headings for your criteria, and here's our criteria over here, exactly the same. It's best to copy them, actually. And also our copy to data, in other words, where we're going to copy the data to, and also our data must be spelt exactly the same. If you want to have a heartache and have it not work, then don't spell them the same. So our criteria over here, our copy to, and our extract range need to be exactly the same. Now, we're going to use formulas to be able to grab the information that we put into here and then pull it over into our criteria block and we're going to add some operators. Well, what are operators? Operators will add extra features that we can use with an advanced filter. I'll show you what they are as we go through. Now, you'll just notice over here, this is not the criteria block. This is a block where we're going to be pulling data from this into the criteria over here. You'll notice we put start date and finish date here, but over on our criteria, we have exactly the same header as in the, as in the database and repeated receipt date and receipt date. So let's go in here and put in our first formula. So it's going to go equals, and where do we want to go? Well, what we want to do is put in an if statement. Equals if and then we'll scroll back over here, we'll grab our first cell. This is our cell here, here's our formula. Now, when you're dealing with dates, remember dates are numbers. If I was to type the number 60,000 into a cell and then format it, format it as a date, you'd see it would be a, a, a date well into the future. So remember, dates are numbers. So when we click into here, we say if C6 equals blank, equals blank, then what do we want to do? We'll put in a comma, the value, if it's true, if it is blank, is that we want this now to show an operator which says greater than one. So we're going to put open brackets, our greater than sign, and numeral one. Close brackets, or close double quotes, I should say, else, we want it to equal C6. Now that formula is correct. We should be able to close it up with a close bracket and hit enter. So now we see it is blank. And so it says greater than one. But if we were to type a date in here, first of the 12th, one four, for instance, that is the date that will come over here. Now you notice it's a number. In fact, we need to make just one small change to this. We need this formula to say that it's greater than this start date or greater than or equal to. So we'll just open brackets again, and we're going to put in here the symbol greater than or equal to, double quotes again, and then we'll use and an ampersand and hit enter. So now when we put our date into here again, 12th of the first one four, you'll notice that it tells us it's greater than. Now, this time with our formula, we've done something different. Look at it up here. This time we're referring to our finish date. 
and we've got a d6 equals nothing, then it needs to be less than 60,000. Well, what's 60,000? Well, that's a time right into the future. Let's put 60,000 up here and see what date it is. So there's 60,000. We're going to format it as a date. So we're well and truly into the future with this, and we'll go OK. So 60,000 is the 8th of the 4th, 2064. I think that'll cover what we want to do. OK, so there we have our finish date and we have our end date. If they're blank, we, it's going to show over here as greater than 1 and less than 60,000. Now, with our company, with our company data, we actually want to not have to type in the exact name of the company because we might, we just need to know the first couple of letters. So we're going to use a formula that puts an operator not greater than or less than because we're using text now, we're going to use the wildcard operator. So here's the formula we're going to use. So if E6, where's E6? We just show it up here. We'll type it, we'll just click into the formula so we can see it. There it is, company. If it's blank, then we want the wildcard to show up. So we're going to get everything in it. And then our next formula description is exactly the same, the wildcard operator. Tax category, exactly the same, the wildcard operator, and all the way through to location. They're the formulas we need to put in. And now if you were to check that with an advanced filter, which we'll do right now, you'll find that if you leave anything blank, it'll work for you. But before we move on, we want to record our advanced filter. Now we want to record our advanced filter. So the first thing we do is to go to the developer tab, choose record macro, and we'll call this filter me. And that's all we need to do, just click OK. Now we can run our advanced filter. So on the data tab, choose advanced, and here you see we have filter the list in place, copy to another location. We'll choose copy to another location. The data we want to filter is over here on the data tab. So we'll click first of all into here and highlight it and delete the data that's in there. We'll go to the data tab and we're going to scroll right over the data here, all the way over, and make sure you include the headers in that and include all your data. We'll make that dynamic in a minute with a current region syntax, but for now we'll leave it like that. The criteria, well, the criteria is back here. Remember we mentioned this is our criteria block over here. Again, make sure you include the headers and the operators that we put in by default with our formulas. The next is the copy to range. Well, the copy to range is easy. That's where we want the data to go. So all we do is scroll over the headers here and then click OK. And our data is filtered into here. We should get all of the data because we've got everything blank. And that's a good test to see if all your formulas are working. Now we want to stop recording. So let's have a look at what we've, record, we've recorded. Alt and F11 to open the VBA editor. Now I put a module in here called filtered where we'll put our, our macros when we're happy with them. But here's our recorded one here. And here it is here. It says sheets data range D4 to L133 advanced filter. Now we're going to change this here. We're going to change from a sheet reference to a code reference and we'll use current region. So highlight that and delete it. And we're just going to put in sheet three. Notice over here, data is sheet three. And then we're going to put range D4, which is the start of our data, advanced filter, and we just go as it is. Now, I also like to, you don't have to do this, I also like to hard reference where it's being copied to. So I would put in here normally, I would put in sheet two dot. It's going to sheet two filtered data, and again up here I would put in, you don't have to do that, but it's just a nice little bit of protection when you do that. Notice they went to uppercase as soon as I did it. So there's our macro for filter me. Let's just test it out for a moment. We're going to click on here, filter data on our sheet, right click and choose assign macro. And we'll put filter me, okay? So let's do a test on this now. Let's pop in our tax category and we'll put in education and click filter data. And you notice it just filtered our data for education. Let's put in here, we want to have a company starting with um, C. I think you'll only find there's one and we'll filter data down to one. So everything is working as we want. If we put in start date and finish date, all that will work as well. 
What we want to do now is to have a little macro that clears all this up, makes our sheet look, look nice and clean. So we're going to record that macro right now. So how do we do that? Well, again, we go to the Developer tab. We're going to choose Record Macro. We'll call this one Clear Me. We had Filter Me before, Clear Me. So, okay, now we're recording our macro. What do we want to do? Well, scroll over all this filtered information here, all of the colored backgrounds and everything. I'll go back to where it was. And what we're going to do into here is we're going to choose border none and then click OK. Then we're going to hit the delete key and then we're going to scroll up over to here where all our criteria was put in and hit the delete key again. And then we'll stop recording our macro. Let's have a look at what we've got. Wow, that looks like a lot of stuff, doesn't it? But what we do need to do, we can use this macro as it is, and the, the, the macro I'll put up on the website will be a little bit easier than this, a little bit cleaner than this, but we want to change this reference here to be more than 134 rows. We want it to be 10,000. And we want to change our reference down here to, where are we? That's it, C6, select, clear contents. Okay. All right, let's see how we go with that now. So we've got a macro called Clear Me. We're going to go up here to our Clear button, right click, and we'll assign macro Clear Me. And then go OK. So does that work? Well, let's click on that. It did clear it all. We'll filter some data. There's all the data. And we'll put in here a bit of uh, criteria. And we might put in even here a bit of information. And then we'll click clear. What's it do? Cleared it all out nice and beautiful. All right. Now, when you go to the website, I'll give you the cleaned up version of that that we just put in. And also a little bit of a different version of filter me. Not much, but slightly different. And you'll be able to then pop them in to this area here. If you want it right now, and in fact we'll do that, we'll just grab these ones here, right click and choose cut, and we'll put them into our filtered macro, in our filtered module. We'll right click on this one and we'll choose remove module one. We don't want to export it. And now we have a really nice looking little VBA editor here with just our two macros in them. All right, well in our next tutorial, what are we going to do? In our next tutorial, we're going to deal with the interface sheet, how we can pop up our user form, and then how we can filter our data in here. I'll show you how to create the user form and the code that's necessary. It's actually not a very difficult tutorial, this. I think you'll find it well, uh, easy to do, and not too uh, taxing at all. So that'll be in our next tutorial. This is Trev now from onlinepclearning.com. Thank you very much for listening once again, and I hope you have a really good day. Bye for now.